Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let all creation bless the Lord, the Lord of earth and is ringing, sun, moon, and stars fill our accord. God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you under the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, 
and it will strengthen the weak, but the fat and strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. For this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? According to the working of his great power, God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and you didn't and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today we celebrate the reign of Christ, or Christ the King, a very recent holiday, feast day, in the life of the church. 1925, Pope Pius XI, in response to his understanding of a more and more secular world, created a feast day to celebrate the fact that God is the ruler of the world. It may only be co coincidence that he placed this day on October 31st, same time of year as Reformation Sunday, setting up a Roman Catholic feast at the same time as this very popular Protestant feast day. In 1969, Pope John VI said, 
we have a better day for that feast day and moved it to the last Sunday in the liturgical calendar. After that, the Lutheran Church adopted it as a feast day, the Methodist Church, the Church of England, many Protestant churches, but not the Episcopal Church. This is not an official feast day in our church. If you look in our collects for feast days, it ends. The last one is Thanksgiving. But most Episcopal churches have adopted some kind of celebration honoring the reign of Christ, Christ the King. A revised common lectionary, which includes the Lutherans and Methodists, specifically written for the reign of Christ. But rest assured, you don't have to celebrate it today. I would guess sometime it'll probably become an Episcopal feast day also. And it is certainly worth thinking about and honoring the fact that we are not beholden to earthly powers. God, Father, Son, Spirit, is our ruler. This passage from Ezekiel, it leaves out some of the most important parts. Before we hear what happens of God leading the sheep and dividing the sheep, he talks about the rulers being inadequate. Because they did not follow God, the sheep were scattered. So God comes in and takes care of God's people, for God is the true shepherd. And Christ, sitting on the Mount of Olives, talks about the Son of Man coming in glory with all his angels. And the whole nations of the world coming before him, sheep and goats, We've heard this parable so many times, we think of goats as bad. They are not bad. They were a food source, dairy source. They were just as important in the economy of the time as the sheep. There is no obvious denigration of being a goat. It's just a means of separation. And Jesus says, feed the hungry clothe the naked, take care of the sick, visit those in prison. And in doing so, you give service to me. This can be a difficult passage. For in our wonderful letters of Paul, and in our faith, as we proclaim it, it is not through acts that we are saved. We are saved by grace. Grace is the favor of God, undeserved. Grace is given to us to forgive our sins, kindle our hearts, call us to service. But here we're hearing Jesus say, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in prison, and you serve me, and are welcome into the kingdom. And that is grace. That is truly grace. For it is not our service that saves us, though we are called to serve. It is throughout our whole Gospel of Matthew. It is God for no reason who saves us. Nothing we can do, nothing we can say, Nothing 
we can show as a result of our actions and save us only God's grace. And this gospel reading is actually a little more interesting than the way most of us have interpreted, I'll say most of the way I've interpreted my whole life. This is Jesus preaching to this world of Christians and saying, you showed service to me when you did to the poor. You ignored me when you ignored them. Now I look at that and I can say, I've been on both sides of that coin. I have ignored those in need and I have served those in need. But here's what's interesting about this gospel reading. This translation is very confusing because Jesus says, on that Mount of Olives, preaching, this Jewish man, preaching to his Jewish followers, says, when all the Gentiles of the world are gathered, those who have not known me, that do not follow God, that do not profess Christianity as a faith, these are the people Jesus is talking about. And that's why they say, why are you talking to me? When did I ever serve you? When did I ever take care of you? Then, Jesus says, when you have fed the hungry, you fed me. When you Clothe the naked, you clothe me. When you visit the sick, visit those in prison, you visited me. And this, this is grace given freely, undeserved. <coughs> grace that only God can give. The grace that when we, when anyone <coughs> feeds a hungry person, God is fed. When anyone visits someone who is ill, God is visited. And God rewards this because only God can. As people of faith, as Christians, more is asked of us. We are called not only to serve, but to serve in the name of Christ. It gets a little redundant here. We're serving Christ, we serve others, and we're serving them in the name of Christ. But it's a glorious ministry filled with grace. Grace is the gift of God. Yes, please feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, visit those in prison. But do not mistake your actions as a means of salvation. Your salvation is through the grace of God. And one of the ways we are told, we are shown that we have been given to God's grace is through our Eucharist. Sacraments are outward and visible signs of inward grace given by Jesus Christ in order that we may know that we have received grace. And the first two sacraments are Holy Baptism and Holy Eucharist. We come to this table to partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ so that we know 
we have received God's grace. I'm not making this up. It's in our prayer book. <laughs> Today, we want to dedicate our chapel of grace. There were wonderful, marvelous names suggested for our chapel, and grace was not my first choice. But what can be more important than honoring God's grace, proclaiming God's grace, sharing God's grace? So to the person who may have been the first one to suggest that name, thank you. I think it is a truly wonderful name for our new chapel. And I pray that anyone who enters that chapel will be filled with the grace of God. In the name of Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church of Nigeria. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the mission and ministry of St. Andrews of Chelan and Spokane. 
We also give thanks for the birthdays of the Reverends Finn Pond and Joan Dahl. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all clergy and other ministers, praying especially for the health and well-being of our Bishop Gretchen. We ask that you will be with her and those who care for her while she awaits her surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for a cessation of war throughout the world and make a special plea for peace in the Middle East. We pray for the people of Israel and Gaza that they may remove anger, hate, and fear from their hearts and replace them with your love and the love of your creation. We pray that the leaders of these people will find a way to restore peace to their lands and allow all people to live in safety, free to fully live their lives in the service and love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth is your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, praying especially for Tom and Linda Selstead, Ben Smith and Ken and Sharon Smith, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. In our community, we pray especially for Joyce, Lewis, Julie, Ken, Bob, Jean, Rick C., Lois U., Angelica, Ted, Larry, Dorothy, Jenna, Leanna, Annie, Tap, Stephen, Kurt, Nyla, Tom H., Carol, Harris, Sonia, Alice M., and those for whom we pray either silently or aloud. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for all who mourn. May they be comforted by your love and know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you 
opposing your, your will in our lives, we have, have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We, we repent of the evil that enslaves us, us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. We share the peace of Christ with each other. Please be seated. We're changing our order a little bit today because we're finishing up our service with the dedication of the new chapel. Uh, so I would at this time like to invite anyone forward for birthday travel anniversary prayers today. If we can turn to page 830 in our Book of Common Prayer, we'll pray together prayer 50. On 830. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Joan as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm also going to do our announcements here. So, 
it's kind of difficult to do them in the chapel area. So um, Tuesday night ministry continues. This Tuesday, our educational program is The Wisdom of Solomon. Um, interesting book where it's a long book. We're not going to try to go through every verse, but we're going to hit some interesting parts of it. Uh, the history when it was written and what it may have to do with us in our life today. Uh, as, as usual, dinner at five, uh, Eucharist at six, and the educational program following. Uh, thank you to all who helped with our Thanksgiving meal. We had an absolutely wonderful time. Many people brought dishes. We had people that had never been to our church before come and join us. Uh, it was a really festive and fun celebration. And uh, let's do it again next year. Uh, Advent starts next Sunday. Um, we will be, we don't have a sign up list, but we'll be recruiting people to be our Advent wreath candle lighters. So if that's something you would like to do, we'll start each service with lighting candles on our Advent wreath. If you'd like to be part of that, just let me know and we'll make sure you are put on the list of one of those Sundays. Uh, if not, uh, if people don't come to me, uh, expect a phone call from Sabrina during the week. Um, and also next Sunday, 4 o'clock. Uh, Kathy, do you want to say anything? We'll be celebrating the beginning of the season of Advent with a service of blessings and carols. We did this last year. This is our second annual service of Advent blessings and carols. It's very atmospheric. We'll begin in almost complete darkness with song and candle lighting, and we will be blessed with the presence of Sheila Wilson, formerly organist of this parish. She'll be accompanying the choir, so that I get to see him conduct. It will be a lovely, festive, and reflective way to begin the season of Advent as the rest of the world is beginning their shopping spree. <laughs> not just because I hope you'll come and support our choir and our liturgy, but because it is a beautiful way to prepare our souls for the journey ahead. This year, Advent is very short because the fourth Sunday of Advent is Christmas Eve. So we can have three weeks to prepare. Thank you. Um, for those who signed up to be readers, thank you. Uh, we'll send you the, your reading during the week so that you'll have it in advance and know what you're going to be reading. Some of them are very long, and some of them aren't. So if you would want a short reading, uh, call Sabrina and say, I really want one of the short ones. <laughs> Becky. The angel tree is out by the doors. Also on the angel tree, besides um, things for teen moms and things for our Christmas family, we have also added some tags for St. Michael's Christmas party. And if you take one of those tags, and they are marked on the back, St. Michael's, with the description whether it's a child or a mom, um, you need to put your name down on the list, what number you took, and your telephone number, because uh, Debbie and I will get a call if somewhere along the way somebody gets lost, because we took those with the understanding that we would get all of the information. So what St. Michael's has been doing for a number of years is there is a, um, gosh, I lost the word. There's a transition house downtown for women who are getting out of prison. And this Christmas party is for those women and their children to celebrate. And if you want to go, it's down at St. Michael's on December the 5th. And I think it's at noon. Yeah, it's at noon. So anyway, um, we have a lot to give thanks for and we have a lot of people in need. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? I want to take a point of personal privilege here and briefly mention why I have 
change the time of our announcements from after the peace to at the end of the service? It's not a big, deep, long answer. The prayer book offers three places where one can do announcements. The beginning of the service, after the peace, or at the end of the service. The beginning of the service, several people would miss the announcements. <laughs> Putting them after the peace, to me, interrupts the flow of the service. We do not have two different celebrations on a Sunday. We have a service of the word which leads in to the service of Holy Eucharist. Putting the announcements right here in the middle where we're doing them today tends to stop the service and make it appear more like two separate services. And that is not the intention of the prayer book, and it's not my intention when we do a service. That the service of Holy Eucharist is how, how we receive it, how it affects us, how we receive God's grace during that, is guided through the lessons we read and the prayers we make. So it's all one service given to the glory of God. That's why I put the announcements at the end. Um, for me, it works. And I haven't received too many complaints, but I don't think I ever came and explained why I did that. So that's the explanation, just to help make it really feel like one service from beginning to end. Yes, Bob, you have your hand up. What's that? Um, that's a good question. Let's talk about it after the service. All right. Let us continue with our offertory anthem. I forgot. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving.
May we celebrate this Eucharist to the glory of God. Thanksgiving for God's gift of grace and for the sure and certain hope that Christ will reign here on earth as he does now in heaven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming and glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Oh. 
Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Blessed Timothy and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord and now and forever. Amen. of God for the people of God.
stand as you are able. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food. In the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen.